ಗಣಪತಂ ಹವಾಮಹ ಕವಿ ಕವೀನಾಮುಪಮಸ್ರವಸ್ತಮ ಜ್ಯೇಷ್ಠರಾಜ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಸ್ಪತ ಆನ ಶೃಣ್ವನ್ ನೂತಿ ಸಾಧನ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾಗಣಾಧಿಪತ ನಮ ಓಂಭಂ ಚರ್ಷಣೀನಾಶ್ವರೂಪಮದಾಭ್ಯಂ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪತಿ ವರೇಣ್ಯಂ ಪರಮ ಪದಂ ಸದಾ ಪಶ್ಯಂತ ಸೋರಯ ದಿವಿ ವಚಕ್ಷುರ ತೀಂ ಜ್ಯೋತಿರ್ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಯ ನಮ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಸೆ ಹರೇ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ನೂನ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಓಂ ಹರೇ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ಆಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆಸ್ ಬಿ ಪಿ ಹೆಚ್ ಎಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ನ್ ವೇರ್ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಓಕೆ ವೆರ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ಥರ್ಟೀನ್ ಓಕೆ ಎಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಓಕೆ so we are in chapter 16 in sandam's version verse 13 sute se chandra samyukte tadrash kanagate piva tabahi kanja kotpatti pravade daiva chintaka sute se chandra samyukte means the fifth lord is with moon fifth lord is, is with moon tadrash kanagato gate piva tadrash kanagate piva means in the drashkana of that tad, tad basically means that or in that drashkana here we have to do a little bit of interpretation it's not really very clear what he means so he is saying fifth lord is either with moon or in that drashkana so obviously he is talking about some drashkana associated with moon it is very likely to mean a drashkana owned by moon you could also interpret it as being with moon but based on the sentence construction my interpretation is not that my interpretation is either with moon or in moon's rakana cancer gate chite se chandra samyukte tad rakana gate piva ah not in the rakana occupied by moon basically cancer occupying cancer in the rakana right tadahi kanyakotpatti pravade daivachintakah that means tadahi kanyakotpatti then a girl is born so the combination is fifth lord should be with the moon and he should be or he should be in uh, cancer drakana the thing is i will uh, my take on this is take it with a pinch of salt just the fifth lord being in cancer drakana is not sufficient to give a daughter take it with a pinch of salt the next one is sute se d3 the second question why d3 he says the second uh, not at all clear because yeah, he mentioned that siblings are to be seen in drakana he mentioned that children are from yeah saptamsha children are from d7 saptamsha why is he saying d and drakana here is not at all is not at all clear what is it mean from siblings yeah but we are not about siblings we are talking about children birth of a daughter so it is it, is, it has to be from saptamsha rather than drakana that is why i am actually suspicious of this word the problem is there could be one or two verses here and there which were added by somebody just for fun so uh, take it with a pinch of salt the next one sute se chara rashi sthe rahuna sahite ವಿಧೌ ಪುತ್ರಸ್ಥಾನ ಗತೆ ಮಂದೇ ಪರ ಜಾತ ವದೇಚ್ಛು ಓಕೆ ಸುತೆ ಸೆ ಚರ ರಾಶಿಸ್ಥೆ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ದ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎಸ್ ಚರ ರಾಶಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಎ ಮೋಬಲ್ ಸೈನ್ ಹೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಏರೀಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ಸರ್ ಲೀಬ್ರಾ ಆರ್ ಕೆಪ್ರಿಕಾನ್ 
ರಾಹುನಾ ಸಹಿತೆ ವಿಧೌ ಓಕೆ ಅಂಡ್ ರಾಹುಣ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಎಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ರಾಹು ರಾಹುಣ ಸಹಿತೆ ವಿಧೌ ಲಸಿ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರೆಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿಪಲ್ ವೇಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮೀ ಸಿ ಹೌ ಹಿ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರೆಟೆಡ್ ಇಫ್ ದ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಮೊಬೈಲ್ ಸೈನ್ ವೈಲ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟರ್ನ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಆಸ್ ರಾಹು ಇಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೂನ್ ದ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ವಶ್ಚನಬಲ್ ಓಕೆ ಫೈನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಹೌ ಸಂತಾನ ಚೂಲಸ್ ಟು ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರೆಟ್ ನೌ ಲೆಟ್ ಮೀ ಗಿವ್ ಮೈ ಮೈ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಸುತೆ ಸೇ ಜರಾಸಿಸ್ತೆ ಇಸ್ ಅನಾಂಬಿಗ್ಯೂಸ್ ರಾಹುನ ಸಹಿತೆ ವಿಧೋ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಿಧಿ ಇಸ್ ವಿತ್ ರಾಹು ನಾವು ವಾಟ್ ಡಸ್ ಈ ಮೀನ್ ಬೈ ವಿಧಿ ವಿಧಿ ಒನ್ ಒನ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಧಿ ಈಸ್ ಡೆಸ್ಟಿನಿ ಫೇತ್ ನಾವು ಹಿ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ಟು ಮೀನ್ ಮೂನ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕ್ವಶ್ಚನಬಲ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಸೆಟ್ ದ ಡಿಕ್ಷನರಿ ಟು ಸಿ ಇಫ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಧಿ ಈಸ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಮೂನ್ ಬಟ್ ಅದರ್ವೈಸ್ ಇಫ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದ ಕೇಸ್ ಇಫ್ ವಿಧಿ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೂನ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ಟು ಫೇತ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಶೋಸ್ ಫೇತ್ you either take the ninth house bhagya like you said ninth house is the house of fortune it is the house of your fate and also lagna itself is with the root of your fate so either lagna or probably the ninth house the ninth house of fate, uh, fortune my guess is we are talking about chail here and fifth and ninth houses are more important than lagna fifth, fifth house is basically the house of children so my guess is rahuna sahite vidho basically means Uh, rahu in the ninth house basically accept uh, uh, aspecting the fifth house yes yes why is the focus for the fifth house only uh, is discussing all the verses related to children and so actually we haven't finished all the verses there may be more verses that deal with other aspects of the fifth house if you look at the, look at previous chapters also he did not really focus on all the focus on all the aspects of the house he just gave some important aspects typically when when you are dealing with the fifth house if somebody comes to you they come to you with children seventh house they come to you with marriage but the thing is there are other aspects which he means he himself mentioned earlier other aspects of different houses so each house he gave general he gave general list also before he went went into detail on each house this is just a guideline if you know how to interpret children you know how to interpret fame for example fifth house is also fame and all the following that you enjoy in the world which is kind of like children there is a big film star who has lot of fans they are kind of like children not exactly like children but there is some similarity children follow you they learn from you and also your the people who give you fame they also follow you so there are there, there is a there is a common theme and moreover if you are intelligent basically you can use this as a basis and then form your own guidelines for judging the other aspects so and also he will hopefully if you go a little further he will mention a couple of other things also relating to the fifth house now uh, let's finish the combination so the combination so far is fifth lord is in a mobile sign and rahu is in ninth house putra sthanam gate mande and fifth house contains saturn putra sthanam gate mande parajatam vade chachum he says the child is of questionable birth that is how he interprets but literally parajatam vade chishu means chishu means uh, child child of the person parajatam means born born to somebody else so basically if you are, uh, if such a combination is present the person may have a child belonging to somebody else basically it may be an adoption or it may be an affair of the spouse with somebody else uh getting a child which is not basically the person so there are different different interpretations but basically what it literally means is the child that such a person gets is born to somebody else is actually somebody else's child so saturn who are the planets who dominate here saturn. of course fifth house is a is, is the important house because it is the house of children and sute se charra se so fifth lord in a mobile sign is a key thing so some transition some some changes basically relating to children are being shown by it but by no means that is sufficient that is a very very minor condition the major conditions are saturn and rahu's influence on the fifth house rahu in the ninth house of fortune affecting the fifth house and saturn being in the fifth house those are the key
Typically, you would expect in a husband's chart, could be in a wife's chart also. She may, she may not become a child, basically. The, for example, uh, if the husband, uh, if, if they just adopt a, ch adopt a child, whether it's husband or spouse doesn't really matter. And if you are talking about uh, husband begetting ch child from another woman, for example, they may be, they may be a couple and, uh, I mean, especially in the old days, there may be two wives and one of the, one of the wives may have this combination in her chart. So, he may beget the child from the other wife, but she may be actually taking care of the child. Or, at the time of marriage, they, uh, at the time of childbirth, there may be only one uh, wife and she may pass away. And when the child is young, the father may get married to another woman and she may raise the child. So there also you can, you can expect this combination. It basically means raising somebody else's child. It could also mean Dattaputra Yoga, which is adopting a child. The next verse, verse 15 is, Lagna Dastamage Chandre Chandra Dastamage Gurau Papagraha Yerjute Druste Parajato Nasam Seya. Okay. Okay. Lag Lagna Dastamage Chandre means? Yes, go ahead. Lagna means from Lagna. Ashtamage means, Ashtama means eight, Ashtamage means gone into the eighth, who? Chandra, Chandra, moon. Moon is in the eighth house, from Lagna. Chandra, Ashtamage, Guru. And moon is in, uh, Jupiter is in? Eighth from Chandra. Eighth from moon. So, in other words, which house would Jupiter be? Jupiter be in? Third house. So, moon in the, moon in the eighth house and Jupiter in the third house. Two planets in Manakarakasthana, both moon and Jupiter. Papa Grahe Yute Druste Papa Grahe he means by male planets. Druste means Yute means conjoined. Druste means aspected. So and he uh, moon is in the eighth house, Jupiter is in the third house and Papa Grahe Yute Druste. Now the interesting thing is he used the he used the Akvachanam. Papagraha Yute Drushte. He used basically singular. He didn't use dual or plural. So he is talking about only one of them. Which one? Moon or Jupiter is not obvious. He said if moon is in the eighth, eighth from Lagna, if Jupiter is in the eighth from moon, and if he is aspected by aspected or conjoined by male fish. So because he used singular, singular case, and latest he talked about was Jupiter. First moon and then Jupiter. It is logical to apply it to Jupiter. So, my interpretation is, moon in the 8th house and Jupiter in the 3rd afflicted by malefic, either conjoined or aspected by malefic planets. Also, Paraj, for me? Also, Jupiter makes uh, more logical sense because being he, the... He is the karaka for children. He is the putra karaka. He is the significator of children. Very good point. So, Jupiter makes more sense. Excellent. And as a matter of fact, forget moon, irrespective of where moon is. If Jupiter is in the third house afflicted by male fish, that itself is a bad indication as far as children are concerned. It shows some problem with respect to children. Exactly what you have to dig into the other details, but it, that itself is not a good combination. So, in this case, again the result is parajato nasamsaya means have to raise somebody else's children. Basically, cannot bear children. And realize that it is and. It's not R. All these three conditions, moon in the eighth, Jupiter in the third, Jupiter reflected by male fix, all the three are basically inclusive conditions. It's and, 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 this and, that, and, that. The next verse is... I, I get something, some different opinion on this too. You can combine these two verses, the previous one and this. Yeah. Uh, this one, Parajato uh, makes more sense uh, to me, at least I'm interpreting like that. That is uh, Dasaputra Yoga in this case, yeah. and an affair with somebody else in the previous case, more so because Saturn was involved. Not necessarily. Saturn in the fifth house. See, we are not talking about the seventh house here. We are only talking about the fifth house. No, because only with Saturn comes the adultery. Right, but Saturn is not just the planet of adultery. 
Saturn is also the planet of depletion. It is the planet of rejects, rejecting something basically, uh, not giving you something. He is the planet of drying things. He is a very lean, lean, lean planet. So he likes to deplete things. So if Saturn is in the fifth house, it can basically cause some lack of children. You don't get a child and you have to get somebody else. And also for as far as raising somebody else's children, uh, taking adoption also, Saturn is a very important karaka. So you you can't say that it, it implies adultery. It is just one of the possibilities. It's not the only possibility in both both the cases. On the other hand, if the combination is relating to the seventh house, if Saturn, Rahu, etc. are involved, maybe you can talk about adoption, but we are not talking about that here. We are restricting to the eighth house, I mean fifth house. The next verse is possible. Right, but the thing is, uh, they, they are not necessarily different. In one case, Saturn, the planet of depletion, is afflicting the fifth house. In other other case, the Karaka of fifth house, Jupiter, one who brings it about, he is he is basically in Manakarka Sthana, he is very weak and he is afflicted by male fix. Saturn and Rahu could be one of those male fix. Obviously, male fix are covered there. So, male fix are... Uh, and the thing is, if you ask me, oh, actually, that, that's the other point. I'm glad you you brought it up. Here, the affliction is it from natural male fix or functional male fix? What do you think? He said papa. He didn't say krura. Krura grahai yute He said papa grahai. So it is functional male fix, not natural male fix. Functional male fix. The next verse is Putrasthana dhipe soche lagnad vad vitrikonage guruna samjute drushte putra bhagya mupaiti sah putrasthana dhipe soche means putrasthana dhipa who is putrasthana dhipa the lord of the fifth house soche means he is in his exaltation sign so he is very he is very strong lagnadva Vitrigonage. Lagnatva. Lagna. Uh, va means R. So this is basically an exclusive condition. Uh, not exclusive, but this R, that condition. Could be both also. But doesn't have to be both at the same time. Lagnatva. R from Lagna. Vitrikonage means? Vitrikonage. V means second. Second R trines. It's not just trines. So the fifth lord is either exalted or in the second house, fifth house and eleventh house. He is in one of those houses. Guru na samyute drushte. Guru na samyute drushte. Means? Either samyute means conjoined or yukte means drushte means aspected. So either conjoined or aspected by Jupiter. Putra bhagya mupayate saha. Means he will be fortunate with respect to children. So after giving a couple of bad combinations, he is giving good combinations. So the combination is the fifth lord is in second house, <coughs> our fifth lord is in fifth house itself, our fifth lord is in ninth house, our fifth lord is in Lagna. These are the one, two, five and nine. He should be in one of these four houses. Or exalted alternately. This is something that you can expect, I mean you can see in some charts. Fifth Lord being exalted is not really a rare thing. The only additional thing is Jupiter aspecting or conjoining. So, this is something that we can find in some charts. The next verse is verse 17. Dvichatuh papa samjukte, dvichatuh pa, trichatuh papa samjukte, sute saumya vivarjite. Sute se nicha rasis te nicha santho bhave chuchu. Okay. Trichatu papa samyukte sute means Trichatu papa samyukte means three or four. Three means three, chatu means four, papa means male fix planet. Natural, not natural, okay. functional male fix. So three or four male fix, samyukte means. 
conjoined by conjoined by them who sute the fifth house so fifth house is occupied by three or four male figs soumya vivarjite you know what the the actual word say soumya vivarjite means soumya avivarjite that means uh melphigi is melphigi is melphigi is not there uh, sorry vivarjite means melphigi is not there avivarjite means there is a melphig and if you look at the result the result is a bad result you are saying literal soumya means natural benefit right so he if you literally take the way the verse is given here it means three or four functional benefits should be in a fifth house and there should be some benefit also it doesn't make any sense it has to be no benefits there so i'm pretty sure this is a typo or this is a this is a mistake in the verse it's not soumya vivarjite but soumya vivarjite there is no dirgha there so that means sute soumya vivarjite means the fifth house does not contain any benefits so they have to be three or four male figs without any relief from a benefic who also joins them so it should be just a gang of bad guys no benefics and if one of the one of those three or four functional male figs happens to be a natural benefic that's basically excluded that's not good enough so it has to be all natural male figs as well as functional male figs Three or four, pardon me. Three or four functional malefics, and also no natural benefits there. Which means all those functional malefics also have to be natural malefics, right? So, for example, uh, let me give an example. Suppose what goes is the lagna, and let's say, uh, let's say Saturn, Rahu, and Mars are in the fifth house. Mars is the eighth lord, third and eighth lord. He is a malefic. Saturn is the fifth and sixth lord. He is between neutral and malefic. Rahu is the sixth lord. He is malefic. So Saturn, Rahu, and Mars being in the fifth house for Virgo lagna, basically causes this combination, right? No Mars is exalted. No Mars is exalted. He is not talking about exaltation and debilitation here. In general, functional malefic being in any house is bad for that house, particularly for the fifth house. Sute se niche rasi the and on top of it there is another condition. The fifth lord should be debilitated. So fifth house has functional benefits who who don't happen to be natural benefits, and there is no natural benefit there, and the fifth lord is debilitated. Then niche sansto bhave niche sansto it says, but it's actually niche sansto it's again typo. Niche sansto bhave shisho means the child will be he will have bad character and he will be moving with bad people. He will be he will have a debilitated character. basically it's not a desirable child child will be ill, Ill behave and as a result they will be suffering to the parents so the thing is if there is if there are malefics afflicting the fifth house it could either be not getting children not getting a child having to adopt etc on the other hand it could also be having a child who basically gives trouble who's Who's, a, who's problematic? The next verse, verse eighteen. Putrasthanam gate jive, tadi se bhugsam yute, dwatrin se chetra yastrin se vatsare putrasam bhava. Putrasthanam gate jive means no. Putrasthanam gate jiva means no. Yes, jiva is Jupiter. Putrasthanam gate jive. Jupiter is in the fifth house. Tadise bhugu samjute. Tadise means the lot of that house, fifth house, bhugu samjute. He is with Venus. So fifth house contains Jupiter, and fifth lot is with Venus. Can you guess whether the result is going to be positive or negative? Very positive. Very positive because you are dealing with two benefits, two natural benefits with respect to fifth house, and also Karaka is covered. So it has to be a very good combination. The result is. द्वात्रिंशे जत्रयस्त्रिंशे वत्सरे पुत्र संभव है। The result is in the thirty second or thirty third year there is a child. Thirty second or 
थर्टी सेकेंड और थर्टी थर्ड ईयर ऑफ द पर्सन देर इज देर इज चाइल्ड बर्थ आई थिंक दिस हैव टू डू विद नेचुरल द नेचुरल ईयर थर्टी टू एंड थर्टी थ्री आई बिलीव आर द नेचुरल ईयर्स ऑफ वीनस बेस्ड ऑन द नैसर्गिक दशा स्कीम सो ही इज बेसिकली से चाइल्ड इज बॉर्न ड्यूरिंग वीनस इंफ्लुएंस पीरियड बट देन यू कुड जर्नलाइज दिस and you could say that it doesn't have to be the 32nd or 33rd year when venus influence is strong in the chart yeah. uh, venus dasha what is so positive about the combination because uh, this is there is not yeah yeah there is actually the result attributed here is not a great result this just a timing related this is a timing related combination but the thing is you can expect not only the child may be born in the 32nd or 33rd year or generalizing it when venus and dasha or something is running but in addition the person is lucky with respect to children the the next verse is verse 19 sute se kendra bhavasthe karakena samanvite shatrim chetrim chadabde cha putrotpattim vinirdise okay sute se kendra bhavasthe means the fifth lord is a quadrant the fifth lord is in a quadrant shatrim se karakena samanvite who is the karaka for children he is with jupiter the fifth lord is in a kendra along with jupiter shatrim se trinchad abde cha putrotpattim vinirdise either in the 30th year or 36th year the ch- childbirth happens 36th year 30th year i don't remember who's natural year it is but 36th year is jupiter's natural year so he is basically saying during jupiter's natural year they can be child birth lagnat bhagyagate jeeve jeevat bhagyagate bhrugau lagneshe bhrugu yukte va chatva rimshe sutam vadet okay hmm this is too specific lagnat bhagyagate jeeve if jupiter is in the ninth house <coughs> of fortune जीवाद भाग्य गते भृगो एंड वीनस इज इन द नाइन्थ हाउस फ्रॉम जुपिटर विच मीन्स वीनस इज इन द फिफ्थ हाउस सो वीनस इन फिफ्थ एंड जुपिटर इन नाइन्थ हाउस और वट इज द अदर थिंग लग्नेशे भृगजुक्ते वा लग्नेशे भृगजुक्ते वा मीन्स द लग्ना लॉर्ड इज विथ वीनस देन द रिजल्ट इज चतवाशे सुधम वे मीन्स in the 40th year there is a there is a child born so the combination is uh, jupiter in 9 and lagna in venus in 5 lagna no 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 jupiter in 5 and venus in sorry jupiter in 9th and venus in 5th or venus with lagna lord so venus venus is either in the 5th house or somewhere else but with lagna lord yeah okay. so venus combinations put an r between them and jupiter combination is basically fixed so jupiter has to be in the ninth house then the person will get a child now the thing is this is just one result don't you, you should not take it very literally you may find a combination like this and the person may get a child earlier also what this is basically saying is what is the ninth house the house of fortune So if Jupiter is in the ninth house, it can make the person dharmic. It can. There are so many results that can be attributed. One of the results is the person will be lucky with respect to children, right? If somebody gets a child when he is 20 or 25, what's the big deal? This it's not really great. On the other hand, if somebody doesn't have a child, and then when the person is reasonably old, then he gets a child in his 40s or something. then basically what it means is people will look at him as a lucky person right so basically it shows some problem but he is lucky and then the prob- problem goes away so that way jupiter being in the ninth house brings some fortune for fortune to come there has to be a problem and then you, you see a uh, manifestation of the fortune and then the fifth house has venus influence fifth house has the rajasic influence of venus either the fifth house contains venus or fifth lord is with venus and venus can sometimes delay the child birth he basically wants you to just enjoy your life instead of getting a child and getting the responsibility 
So Venus can sometimes delay the child birth. So child will be in 40th year, right? Yeah, the combination says 40th year. Child birth in the 40th year. The next verse is. Okay, we have another couple of verses, another three verses based on the which are, which gives some timing, hints at timing. Putrasthanam ka tehra hau tadi se papa samjute niche rasi ka to jeevo dvatram se putra murchuda. Oh, this is actually reverse. Putrasthanam ka tehra hau means Rahu goes to the fifth house. Tadi se papa samjute. And the lord of the fifth house is with male fix. Nije Rasi Kato Jeevo and Jupiter is debilitated in Capricorn. So Jupiter Nije, the Karaka of children is debilitated. The Lord of the house of children is, he is with male fix, functional male fix. And Rahu is affecting the fifth house. Doesn't it show some shock relating to children? In general Rahu in the fifth can show some kind of shock relating to children. And the fact that both the fifth lord and the significator of children are also afflicted, they are incapable of basically rescuing the fifth house from the clutches of Rahu. So it means some setback, some shock relating to child is possible. And the result given is Dvatrimche Putra Murchudaha. Means in the 32nd year there is Putra Murchudaha. Means there is death of child. The year you can take with a pinch of salt but the thing is this is not a good combination for the children. They can be uh, of course, it may not be death in every case, but if you see fifth lord afflicted by functional male fix, Jupiter in debility and also Rahu afflicting the fifth house, this you should you should have some concern. Especially when Rahu's periods come Dasha or Antar Dasha are those of the afflicting planets. The, uh, the functional male fix who afflicts Saturn. When they Dashas and Antar Dashas come, if you see their and Rahu combination in both Dasha and Antar Dasha, you should basically be careful during such time. Is Pardon me? There could be a case where uh, child is dead right away. Uh, stillbirth basically. Being born as a dead child is stillbirth. That is also possible. Yes, that is also possible. But the combination is not restricted to that. It is death of a child. So child may be born earlier, but in the 32nd year, there may be the tragedy of losing a child. Jeevat, the next verse is Jeevat panchama ge pape lagnat panchama ge picha Jeevat panchama ge pape lagnat panchama ge picha Shatrim se chatra yastrim se chatva rim se sutakshaya Okay. Jeevat panchama ge pape means From Jupiter, a male figure is in the fifth house. Jivat means from Jupiter, from Jiva. So, taking Jupiter as Lagna, from the Jupiter, if you count, the fifth house is containing a male figure. And Lagna Panchamage Picha. And also from Lagna also. So, both the fifth house from both Lagna and Jupiter is afflicted by a functional male figure. Shatrim se chatra yastrim se chatva rinse se chudakshaya then 36th year trayastrim se 33rd year chatva rinse or 24th year in one of those years they can be chudakshaya means loss of a child so child child loss can occur in the 30, 24th, 33rd or 36th years in this particular combination again exactly how he came up with these numbers assuming that this is not uh, this is not added to Parashara's teachings. Assuming that this was actually from Parashara, how he came up with these numbers is a mystery. There is no real uh, answer. My guess is it may be, it may have to do with some Dasha calculations basically or some natural years. The next verse is Lagne Mandita Mayukte. Lagne Mandita Mayukte. Lagne Mandita Mayukte. You were saying Yeah, so you are asking when you say 32nd year, 
is it talking about 30 second solar year or 30 second jo jovian year or 30 second lunar year right. if so if lunar year based on star or based on city in general in arbit time of parashara uh, era no, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah in that era what what, what they were using the thing is they weren't actually using just one calendar they had all these different calendars they had they had solar calendars they had multiple lunar calendars they had various kinds of calendars so the question that you ask is an interesting one which uh, what is the definition of a year here is it talking about jovian year or is it talking about solar year it's not obvious but the thing is in my honest view general combinations about the strength and weakness of fifth house work but these combinations about child being born in a particular year or child being dead in a particular year they don't necessarily work so you don't have to be really so particular if you get it in the ballpark if you want to get it in the ballpark dashas are your best bet transits are your best bet city pravesh as we have been doing is your best bet not really these combinations so uh, don't worry so much but there is there are some techniques for counting the years based on the progressions right we have we can say okay in the in the 12th year or 24th year or 36th year there is a possibility of so and so result happening like that we give we give some uh, we gave some results earlier based on progressions right we have these one year progressions the sun's progression there yeah there we are talking about solar calendar and for all you know some of these combinations may be based on prog progressions so you should basically i suggest if you want to use these i suggest using the solar calendar the next verse is lagne mandita mahyukte lagne cheni charashike shat pancha sat shat pancha sat tama tamebde cha putra shoka samakula okay lagne mandita mahyukte okay lagne means lagna mandi tama yukte the word tama is actually very curious there for me tama tama is usually used to refer to rahu and it could also be mean a tamasic planet like saturn rahu ketu mars etc let's see how santaram translator should it mandi be in the ascendant by ascendant lord is in fall grief on account of loss of child in the six okay he has just ignored the word tama he just translated as lagna has mandi so lagne mandi mandi yukte he ignored the word tama so the thing is my take is the the fact that parashara used the word tama obviously he is he is referring to something otherwise he won't use the word he could have for example said mandi sama yukte for example instead of tama yukte so it's probably mandi in lagna along with mandi and ta tama let's say means rahu it could be a melfic planet also uh, i mean a tamasic planet also but it is it is possibly rahu so one interpretation is mandi and rahu in lagna the other interpretation is mandi and some tamasic planet like saturn mars rahu in the lagna so mandi is basically one must the other one it, it is either it is perhaps rahu or perhaps one of saturn mars rahu if you take one interpretation it is more general more applicable if you take another it basically becomes narrow so i suggest taking the more general approach and see if you have any charts like that where one of the tamasic planets occupies lagna along with mandi when you say that uh, does uh, you usually we get number of uh, cases we will have number of things where where you have uh, julika and mandi in lagna yeah what does that mean is it just that combination is enough no that's not enough according to what santanam gave that's enough if lagna lord is in, is in debility and mandi is in lagna that is enough but according to my interpretation it's not enough it has to be mandi along with some melfic planet either rahu or one interpretation is mandi and rahu should be in lagna the other interpretation is mandi along with either saturn or rahu or mars we don't consider uh, julika in this case we, we don't, don't like we talked about in the earlier class there is a view that gulika and mandi are basically the same though there is a view that gulika and mandi are different the view that i shared in the last class is basically gulika and mandi are one and the same and i also said instead of taking in the middle basically take at the beginning of saturn's portion and also instead of taking in the eighth portion it is saturn's portion basically so when you we we covered those verses in the last class so listen to the audio at the beginning of saturn's portion 
if you take the lagna that is basically the longitude of the mandi. mandi so if that mandi happens to be in lagna and see the thing is it could be any male vague but probably it is just rahu okay tama he is actually meaning only rahu that is my guess then 56th year during in the 56th year there is sadness on account of children okay we will cover the remaining verses in the next class we will go to practicals now we will just do some example if you guys have any doubts me we start the usually when we talk about uh, children like this yeah uh, it is to which child is it talking about is it the first child second child third child or it could be one so one child he is not talking about a specific child he is talking about one child and or if you for me or more yeah or more but the thing is if you really want to these are all just specific general guidelines if you want specific part fortune about each child the best bet is what we did earlier go to saptamsha go to d7 find the lagna corresponding to that particular child take the fifth lord seventh lord ninth lord etc so that is basically the most valuable technique any any questions on this or in general any questions before the before we take up an exam i just want to share something from our last two classes we discussed the uh, marriage problem of Girl and girl boy. Yeah. Uh, I just communicated. I just want to share what I communicated to the okay. gentleman. Okay. Okay. I said uh, if the boy can pray to the remedies that we talked about. Yeah. Uh, fasting on Thursday and then praying to Durga and then trying to do uh, trying to do what what we talked about. Mm hmm. He can do that in case if you want to really save the marriage. He mm -hmm. can do that as well as the girl can do. I think Lakshmi and Simha as well as. Uh, Fast on Wednesday and things like that. Okay. Both can do that and live together. And uh, but the fact is, this boy is not really a trustworthy. There is some kind of negativeness involved with it. Yeah. But it's going to be a life of compromise. Yeah. So please, until 2009, I we don't see a great uh, positive angle to this. There will be some quarrels and compromise that has to go with. Mm -hmm. If accepting those facts and they want to live together, do these methods and things can improve. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he communicated that the girl was interested in going back and staying with that boy. Very good. Then I said the best option is let them let both of them do these measures Excellent. and live together with an expectation of a little compromise. Yeah. Then even if it breaks, then you have not lost. Uh, Basically, as far as the career is concerned, they were say they were thinking that he makes fifty thousand, but it turned out to be only five thousand, which was a lie. Yes. But the thing is, they should as long as they realize that his career will be so so for a while, with some. Sum up basically in the next couple of years, but in general for another 10-15 years it will basically be an average career. If they are happy with it, if they if they adjust to it, if they if they basically can live with it, then fine. But th those measures, because there is a market as well going on for the marriage, those measures will still be helpful. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. Any chart that you guys want to see? Any interesting chart that you have seen so uh, recently, or any chart that was confusing? Any chart that you want to share? I haven't looked that, but I have one chart there. We can. The boy is very spiritual and uh, okay. uh, is a kali upasaka. Okay. So we can see whether that kind of makes sense. Okay. What is the what is the? There is P Kalyan. Uh huh. P Kalyan. Just look at P. P Kalyan. Right. This one. P right. dot Kalyan. Okay. Yeah, okay. The data is 1973 February 2nd, 3:05 p.m. Indian Standard Time, 78 degrees 28 minutes east, 17 degrees 23 minutes north. So this is the chart of a spiritual person, very highly spiritual. Highly spiritual person who is a Kali sadhaka, Kali worshipper. Now, what do you want to see? I mean, because the chart when I looked at it, eight house was very glaring. Yeah. Oh boy. Mm. So that kind of uh, interest that he he also has lot of occult experiences and. Uh, no wonder. Yeah. 
Did you see that he was born in Amavasya city? Yes, yes. Yeah, he, he is born in Amavasya city. He has Pravraja Yoga. You see. Pravraja Yoga. Pravraja Yoga, he has. Yes, combination that makes one an ascetic. And such a person, even if the person is married, he will basically be like a sannyasi. He will, uh, he will have the spirit of a sannyasi, basically. Very, very detached. Ketu is in Lagna. And Ketu is in Lagna. Ketu is, is in Lagna. What, what does it mean? Ketu is the planet of spirituality. He is the Mokshakaraka. So, in general, if Ketu is in Lagna, either the person is very eccentric, very crazy, or he is spiritual. Or both. Spiritual yes. people can also be really crazy. So, one of the two. And he has, if you look at the planets, there are six planets in Moksha Trikonhas. Saturn in the twelfth, Moon, Venus, Mercury, Sun and Jupiter, five planets in the eighth. So, basically, six planets out of nine are in Moksha Trikonas, 4, 8 and 12. 8 and 12 are really, really dominant. So, this is the chart. Looking at the Rashi chart, you can say, this is the chart of somebody who's, who is, who, who basically wants Moksha, who doesn't want to pursue anything else. It's a very powerful chart. But the thing is, it could also be, just looking at the Rashi chart, it could also be the chart of somebody who is wretched, who is very unlucky, who doesn't, who can't do anything in life. Because the 8th house is not only the house of spiritual sadhana, is also the house of misfortune, uh, of fall, great fall, etc., yes. troubles, hardships, uh, incurable diseases. It could be one. It could be those also. So how do we know which uh, one that's going to be? Right. How do we know? That is why we have all these divisional charts that we've been learning. Do you think <laughs> so the thing is, if you suspect by, by the fact that eighth house is so dominant so prominent and Ketu is in Lagna, if you suspect that this is a spiritual person, go to Navamsa, go to Vimshamsa, first see Navamsa, how is Navamsa? Who are the planets in trines? Because planets in trines show the main ability of the person, the main skill of the person, the main attitude of the person, right? The blessings with which the person is born. Who are in trines in Navamsa? Assuming that this is accurate. Who are in trines? Ketu is in trines. What, is, what would that show? What are the main abilities of the person? He is either good in mathematics because Ketu, one of the things shown by Ketu is mathematics or in operating small, for me, not necessarily. Ketu doesn't show speech, Mercury and Jupiter. But the thing is, Ketu in second house will give a very clear speech. That is a different combination. But Ketu has nothing to, he is not the Karaka for speech. So, uh, what are the other things he can show? He can be good in mathematics, he can be good in abstract thinking, he can be good in, he can be skilled in uh, operating small mm -hmm. instruments, very small instruments, not huge machinery, which is Rahu. Ketu is very small machinery, basically. Small watches are the opening up. Yeah, he is the 12th rod in trine. So, it, it could be that he is want to give us something? Yeah, th that is that is that is true. You are, but you are jumping too fast. Now, uh, and also Ketu is spirituality, moksha. So basically, spiritual spirituality can also be the strength. And and like he pointed out, Ketu is the twelfth lord of basically losing self. Twelfth house is the house of losing things and also losing self. And moksha is nothing but losing yourself completely. As long as you have an ego that I so and so, you you are not there. You are not liberated. Any identity, self-identity is basically, it's a bondage. You think I am so-and-so, Narsimha Rao, I am an astrologer. Okay, you will remain that astrologer. And based on that, you will have another birth, another birth. You don't get moksha. You think, you, or even not this life. In the past life, suppose some sadhu comes and tells you, oh, in the last life, you were Vivekananda, or you were so-and-so person. You think, oh, in the past life, I was this. Again, that's just a bondage. So, based on that thought, there are certain things that you have to do in the future. And it's just form. Yeah, as long as there is some identity, it is just a bondage. So, moksha or any spiritual progress has to involve effacing your personality, effacing your ego, basically cutting down the ego slowly. So, ego, what, what shows your ego? Lagna, that is your self, your concept of self. So, the twelfth house from Lagna is very important for moksha. It is, the, it, is the, it is the key to liberation. So, Ketu is the twelfth lord here, and of course he is in Lagna, in the Rasi Chah, showing a spiritual person. So, 
Drashi and Avamsa seem to show that he is a he is a spiritual person. But let us go to the oh by the way, apart from trines, you can also look at seventh house. Sun is in the seventh house and he is aspecting lagna. He is the ninth lord. So the thing is ninth lord aspecting lagna and sun. What kind of skill will sun, sun show? Some kind of managerial skill, administrative skill. So this person he may be totally detached to everything. He may not want to do. He may not want to have to do anything with any material things. He may want to just go to a jungle and do sadhana. But he he will have some good administrative. For me, whether he is dragged or not, we don't know yet. But he will have a skill for it. That's all you can say from Navamsa. You can't say whether he will be dragged into it. Look at Dasamsa to see what you are dragged into. Dasamsa and Vimshamsa. Vimshamsa is your religious and spiritual experiences, and Dasamsa is your overall contribution to the world. What you do, how you use your free will in this world, what you do in the world, what contributions you make, what is your career, what the, what are your other activities, non non professional activities. So all those are from the Dasamsa. So unless you see that, you can't say whether he will be dragged. But the thing is, he will have a knack for for getting things done. He will be a. Yes. Yes. There is there is there may be some desire from long back basically of admin being a good administrator. That is also a valid thing to say. As a matter of fact, Navamsa shows. various capabilities of your inner self and certain ca- uh, those capabilities come to you because you were basically you had a desire based on what all the good deeds that you did in the past life certain things that you desired you wanted to do the skills related to those things will be given to you in this life so navamsa is the chart not only the chart of your skills but it is the chart of your inner self what your inner self What agenda is your inner self has? That is all shown by Navamsa. Also, I see that his bhagya is blocked by his spouse. His bhagya is blocked by his spouse. Why do you say that? Because ninth pillar son is in seventh house. Yeah. Seventh house yeah. is his spouse. Yeah. So that. So Why do you say blocked? Though? No, Why can't you say? My spouse is bringing the. Right. In general, if the ninth lord is in the seventh house, marriage can bring fortune to the person. Right. That is a. That is a. That is a good conclusion. Now let's go to the so key chart. Is it ninth lord in seventh house or is it a nine in seventh house? For me, is it a nine in seventh house to say that, or is it ninth lord in seventh house? A nine in seventh is even even better because you are talking about tangible fortune. So when if the a nine is in let's say seventh house, when the marriage occurs, there is a tangible evidence of some fortune. A nine is a tangible uh, tangible article that shows fortune that reflects on somebody's fortune. So a nine is more important. But even if the ninth lord is in seventh house, hmm. show some some fortune after marriage. It is a good combination. Yeah, we, yeah, we have to see. That is a very good point. So he is saying before all that, you have to see what is the possibility of marriage. So we'll see if there is interest in marriage. We'll discuss marriage. For me, he got married. So we know that he got married. And again, whether there is a chance of marriage when he got married, we can go into that later. But let's quickly jump to Vimshamsha. We wanted to see whether he is a spiritual person. Pardon me. Two, three times he stops you to go to his office. Yeah. So let's see the Vimshamsa. Is there anything, anything interesting about the Vimshamsa? Yes, Lagna has Saturn. Though Saturn is in Madhukara uh, Sthana, but he is uh, in the own house. Yeah. Retrograde. Yeah. And, uh, okay. The l- one second, one second. Before we proceed further, Lagna and Vimshamsa chart changes. It changes if the birth time is five and a half minutes back, or if it is one minute two seconds later. So if we just add one minute two second to the time, which is three five, if we just make it three six two, three three hours six minutes two seconds, that's enough to take it to Aquarius. So maybe Sagittarius is not a likelihood, Aquarius. but maybe Aquarius is a possibility. So we have to basically, uh, we have to consider both Capricorn and Aquarius. We don't know for a fact which, which is the right right one. Okay, now what do we know about his spiritual life? He done various uh, sadhanas, different types. This is spiritual, and he is only continuing in sadhana basically. 
Okay. Does he have any siddhis? That is a siddhi. Okay. Attached. You said he is attached to Kali. He is attached to, I think he does more Kali sadhana. He does more Kali sadhana. Any other sadhanas he prominently does apart from Kali? Maybe more, but I don't know what, which one. Okay. But he did multiple sadhanas. Okay. 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 That's all good, good information. Now let us. Let us see what's going on. First, man, just Vimshotri, right? right? No conditional dasa applies. So, we'll just. What is the dasa he is running right now? He is in Rahu dasa. Okay. Rahu dasa. Jupiter dasa is going to come soon. Okay. Now, do you guys think that Capricorn Vimshamsa is more accurate or Aquarius? Capricorn kind of makes sense because Saturn and Ramana. Okay, so what does it mean? Some kind of uh, Okay, his point. If Capricorn is the Lagna in D20, which shows spirituality, it shows some kind of Hasidic nature. Okay, my counterpoint. But there is Prabhuja Yoga to start with in the Rashi chart. And Saturn is with, Moon is, uh, sorry, Moon is in Saturn and sign. And Saturn is having Rashi Drishti and Moon is with Arthur. Moon is in the 8th. Okay, yeah, that's true. There is a Parvatana between Venus and Saturn. So, Venus will act as though he is Saturn. So, so, Moon is basically Saturn. So, it's Aquarius. If you are talking about who is rich, who is poor, who doesn't have any money, who doesn't have any resources, for me, it's a discipline. It's discipline. When you're talking about the chart of spiritual pursuit, to pursue his spiritual progress, he can be very disciplined. Saturn can go through any trouble, any hardship. And he wants you all, wants all of us to be like that. And if we are not like that, when his turn comes to influence your life, he will give shocks so that you learn how to be hardworking and disciplined. So that is Saturnine nature. So even with Aquarius Lagna, the Saturnine nature is very well explained. Moreover, the Lagna Lord Saturn is in the 12th house Definitely. of giving up, Definitely. of basically uh, depletion. from the past life to do something. Fifth house. Fifth house is very important for the sadhana that you do. It is basically mantra sthana. The mantras that you, the mantras and various practices that you use. For that fifth house is the house. And of course tenth house is the house of karma, spiritual karma. This is the chart of sadhana. But the karma that you do as a part of your sadhana, which is basically helping other people in, uh, with your spiritual insights, all that is seen from 5th and 10th houses and their Lord Venus, assuming Capricorn is the Lagna, their Lord Venus is in Manakarka Sthana. The fact that, though I know that Sun and Jupiter, fifth and 10th house is in Manakarka Sthana, does it make sense with, with what we know, which is he did so many different mantras, so many sadhanas, and he achieved something with them and he is helping people. But Does it make a lot of sense? It can make sense, of course, the Lord is in 6th house, but uh, uh, the Dispositor is in 6th house. Yeah. Dispositor is in 6th house, yeah. uh, Madhagarastana in this case, but uh, Rahu Ketu being there in the 10th house will show that his karmic activity is involving a lot of spiritual nature. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is so fine, that is fine. That is from that fine, it is, uh, that point of view, it is fine. And maybe the, uh, that is fine, that is fine. Lord being in six, maybe even giving them, giving him the... But still, if, if a planet is in Manakarka Sthana, it is not a desirable thing. So, if such a key planet is in Manakarka Sthana, 
that itself is capable of reducing this vinchamsha in its level, right? On the other hand, and also what kind of sadhanas could you expect for this person? Jupiter and Sun basically show, uh, Jupiter and Sun can show Shiva and also Jupiter and Sun, they are basically Vedic planets. Uh, Jupiter shows Vedic knowledge and Sun also is a very dharmic planet. So, if there is a strong Sun-Jupiter influence on the, on the fifth house, he is a Shiva worshipper, a gre gre uh, great knowledgeable person in Vedanta, a great Vedanti, learned in Vedas. That is what I would have expected. And using that path, using the Vedic path for spiritual progress. On the other hand, if you take, if you take Aquarius Lagna, now the ten, the tenth house point that you mentioned, as far as spiritual karma is concerned, Rahu Ketu influence, that is still there. Rahu and Ketu have an Argala, a strong Argala on the, on the tenth house, right? And that they are in, happen to be ninth house and uh, Venus now becomes a Yogarka in fifth house. Venus becomes a Yogarka in the fifth house. Earlier, with Capricorn Lagna, Jupiter and Sun, the eighth lord, who is a neutral planet, third and twelfth lord, a functional male fix. So basically functional male fix are affecting So it is not good for uh, being lucky with respect to mantra and with respect to upasana. On the other hand, if you take this Lagna now Aquarius, Yogacharaka Venus is in the fifth house. Is it good for mantra sadhana? Is that and moreover, how is the eighth house now? Eighth house contains moon. Sixth lord in eighth house, Viprit Rajoga, and Parivartana between sixth and eighth lord. There is a Viprit Rajoga, and in general, I have seen other cases where there is some link to the eighth house, some link of moon to the eighth house. It is extremely good for occult experiences. Link of moon to eighth house or eighth lord is very, or Saturn. Saturn is the other karka of the eighth house. That is very conducive to occult experiences. Person have had, uh, and actually, one second, let me finish the thought. Moon is with the moon is in Manakarkasthana. Is it good? If moon is in Manakarkasthana, is it good? The whole goal of spiritual progress is to kill the mind. Mind is the nonsensical thing that is blocking you from actually realizing. Who it is that which totally limits you. So, killing of the mind, the ultimate spiritual experience, Sirvikalpa Samadhi is nothing but mind completely dead. Mind does not exist anymore. That is, that is Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Or, Sarvikalpa Samadhi is that where mind exists, but in a very exalted state. In a very... stuff you go that mind clings on to, I, this body, that concept. That is a very debilitating thing, spiritually speaking. So, moon being in Manakarakasthana is not at all bad. And moreover, eighth house is the important house for occult experiences. There have to be some this is on the eighth house for somebody to have mystical experiences. So, here moon is in the eighth house, the eighth lord is basically having a parvatana with the moon and the sixth lord is in eighth house. Sixth house is the house of Siddhi. Sadhana that you are doing, the tapas that you are doing, Eleven. and the leaven from there, fruits of all the tapas that
ಒಂದು ಮಾರ್ಕಂಡೇಯ ಪುರಾಣ ರಹಸ್ಯ ತ್ರೀ ರಹಸ್ಯ ಪ್ರಾಧಾನಿಕ ಪ್ರಾಕೃತಿಕ ವೈಕೃತಿಕ ಮಂಡೋಸ್ ರಹಸ್ಯ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ದೋಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಸೀಕ್ರೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಹರ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ಬೈ ಹರ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಮೀನ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀಯ ದುರ್ಗಾ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ನಾರಾಯಣಿ ದುರ್ಗಾ ಸಪ್ತಶತಿ ಈವನ್ ದೋ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ದುರ್ಗಾ ಸಪ್ತಶತಿ ದೀಸ್ ಡೇಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಅ ಪೇ ಬಿ ಕೇರ್ಫುಲಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ನಾರಾಯಣಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೂಸ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಈಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಮಹಾಪುರುಷ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಈಸ್ ಎ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಶಿವ ಅಂಡ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಹೂ ಪರ್ಸಾನಿಫೈ ಸತ್ವ ರಜಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ತಮಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಈಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಈಸ್ ಸಸ್ಟೈನಿಂಗ್ ಶಿವ ಈಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ದ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಟ್ರೇಸ್ ಟು ದ ಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಟ್ರೇಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟು ದ ಸೋರ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಗೆಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಸಮ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಇನ್ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಮ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಇನ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ದ ರೂಟ್ ದ ಪರಮಪುರುಷ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಟ್ರೇಸ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಟು ದ ಪರಮಪುರುಷ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ನಾರಾಯಣ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೈ ಇಫ್ ಯು ರೀಡ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಯು ಆರ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹೌ ದಿಂಗ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಪ್ರೇಸಿಂಗ್ ಹೌ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ರನ್ನಿಂಗ್ ದ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ರೀಡ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಸುಪ್ತಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ರೀಡ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಸುಪ್ತಮ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಸಹರಿ ಸೈಂದ್ರ ಸೋಕ್ತ ಪರಮಸ್ವರಾಜ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಸ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸ ಶಿವ ಸಹರಿ ಸೈಂದ್ರ ಸೋಕ್ತ ಪರಮಸ್ವರಾಜ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಹೀಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಹೀಸ್ ಹರಿ ಹೀಸ್ ರುದ್ರ ಹೀಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಹೀಸ್ ಸಚಿವ ಹೀಸ್ ಶಿವ ಸೊ ಯು ಆರ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಆಸ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ದ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಹೂ ರನ್ಸ್ ದ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹೂಮ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಹರಿ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಶಿವ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಆಲ್ ಎಮನೇಟೆಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಎಮನೇಟೆಡ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಆರ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಎ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ನುಗ್ರ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನಾರಾಯಣಿ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಾರಾಯಣಿ ಈಸ್ ದ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ದ ಫೇಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ನಿರ್ಗುಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ನೋ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ ನೋ ಆಟಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ವಿಚ್ ಫಿಲ್ ದ ಹೋಲ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಸಡನ್ಲಿ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಮೂವ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಡಿಟೀಸ್ ಕೇಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ನಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಲೆಸ್ which is the root of all other limited forms a nearly infinite form no form is really infinite all forms are finite the only thing infinite is the formless but if you are talking about the nearly infinite form nearly formless form that is narayana and narayani basically is the energy of that form from that form how all these devatas were created from this form how the whole universe came about including brahma vishnu shiva that is narayani that energy behind creation the energy behind that manifest that is you are saying narayani narayani so basically you call her chandi you call her durga you call her by whatever your name you when when the gods are praying to that one they are using the word narayani so it's actually narayani is the root energy anyway coming back to the actual point so the rahasyam how she was created and there he said first there was nothing and then there was mahalakshmi who was uh, who was not of any guna who did not have any guna and then she had all the three guna and then she divided herself into three of uh, she divided the maha, that mahalakshmi who had all the three gunas divided herself into one mahalakshmi who had satguna one mahakali who had tamoguna and one mahasaraswati who was rajoguna and then they created two pairs brahma vishnu shiva and their consorts so that they could create the world and run the world etc so that is how it is described so if you are talking about that mahalakshmi you are actually not talking about just sattva rajas or tamas you are talking about the confluence of all the gunas so venus even though it is talking about the normal the sattvic lakshmi that they could be in that form of lakshmi there is hardly
you know it is limited the advice that you can give has to basically come from your heart when you when you have when, when you yourself have done some heart becomes purer the advice that you give you give comes from your heart and when that is the case your brain basically when it is being run by your heart it gives the right advice otherwise the advice that we give is highly fallible you may go to ramakrishna paramahansa and tell him pray to so and so devata kali is the one who he is one, he was one with of course he himself did so many sadhanas he experienced oneness with so many devatas you just cannot imagine nobody nobody no no other saint no other great yogi could have achieved what ramakrishna paramahansa achieved there are so many who achieved the highest but the thing is he achieved the highest in so many different paths he was into gnana yoga just contemplation like a vedanti he achieved with that he was into bhakti yoga shedding tears for being one with a particular devata and achieved oneness with that devata with kali with sri rama with sri krishna so many with hanuman so many devatas even jesus christ allah he did sadhanas belonging to very <laughs> he was in karma yoga he basically uh, served served the humanity and forgot himself in the service basically he identified with the service he lost his own self identification of ram krishna in the karma and he did raj yoga also he did various hatha yoga various in, especially in his early years so he basically is who showed who demonstrated to the world that all these paths through all these paths you can reach god there are other great saints who show, who took one path and achieved god with that particular path but he is one who showed the pinnacle of experience with all the paths that is why the uh, 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 great saints of his time who met him they say that he is just an avatara he is an avatara of god himself otherwise limited people uh, whether he is a rishi or somebody else a, a lower level yogi in the previous life when he takes birth and achieves his achievement has a limitation and he was see the thing is always talk about samadhi samadhi itself is a is the pinnacle of experience for many people even samikalpa samadhi is the pinnacle of experience for many people and this gentleman he achieved nirvikalpa samadhi and totapuri who was his guru he did sadhana for his whole life to reach nirvikalpa samadhi and this guy he said oh forget kaat there actually there is one root brahman you have to experience that that which is basically no experience that is the thing forget kali forget kali he told told him and then within a few days he basically reached nirvikalpa samadhi when to, under totapuri's guidance and totapuri himself was amazed so this guy could reach nirvikalpa samadhi in just just a few days he was so attached to kali for him there was nothing higher than kali and he ironically he took kali's permission to reach nirvikalpa samadhi he he prayed to her he said please for uh, allow me she she said fine and then he reached nirvikalpa and not only nirvikalpa when your mind is easier relative i'm not saying everybody can do it it's relatively easier nirvikalpa samadhi is relatively easier even higher is sahaja samadhi which is you your mind is working you see the whole world you see people sitting in front of you you see you the inner nature of all these as waves in brahman that perception which is basically you you don't see any duality but you are able to live in the dual world operate in the dual world that is that sahaja samadhi is something that only a handful can experience even great 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 saints cannot experience sahaja samadhi people like sai baba ramkrishna paramahansa they were exceptions and this person ramakrishna paramahansa he not only experienced sahaja samadhi he could induce sahaja samadhi in somebody vivekananda just by touching him sahaja vivekananda was in a state of sahaja samadhi for 15 days merely by the touch of ramakrishna paramahansa so you are talking about some a, a really really about soul he is not he is not just somebody who was born and did lot of sadhana and achieved he is shiva himself or krishna himself otherwise simply impossible so he so anyway where where did we come from yeah huh? and you can you could have suggested actually i can show you later if you use all the techniques that are at our disposal we couldn't have told him kali but it was kali for him anyway but again those positions we gave at the physical level like somebody having come carrier or something like 
राइट राइट इफ यू आर बता इफ यू सी वीनस से लक्ष्मी स्टिल इट इज लक्ष्मी वीनस इज सम फॉर्म ऑफ राशिशाइन on top of it there is mars mercury rahu and ketu rahu rahu and ketu rahu aspecting venus and mercury and mars having having argala on venus but one mercury is very interesting here why he he has argala on the fifth house right in the second house from the second house he has dhana argala the second house argala on fifth house moreover he is the lord of the house right. if the lord of the house has argala on it that's that's a that's a very strong influence so there is a strong mercurial influence also on on the fifth house the sadhana he does the upasana he does the mantra he does have an influence of mercury what kind of influence mercury shows Rajasik. what are the results rajasik one thing but what is what can you say vishnu. which god specific to which god vishnu you can say vishnu but another result of mercury is everything mercury is basically uh, indecisive indecisive so you will see anybody who does lot of sadhana you will see some strong influence of mercury on their house of sadhana because mercury is the is the jack of all trades i'm not saying this person is a jack of all trades he may have mastered several of those but the thing is the the intention to try various things typically comes from mercury he is the karaka for that so that is why i when you i was asking you whether he did any other sadhana If there is a strong mercurial influence, you can expect the person to do many sasana. He is not happy just doing one sasana. On the other hand, some other planet, for example, Jupiter or somebody, or even somebody like Ketu, they would have made the person master one particular thing. Like I said earlier, Ramakrishna Paramahansa used to say, you don't have to dig. If you want water, dig in one place. Dig a well in one place. Find the right place. Dig it. Keep digging. You will find water. If you dig in many places, you may not find water. or maybe you will find water but it's dirty if you dig deeper maybe it will become purer you will get sweeter water maybe so the thing is instead of doing many sadhanas why do you need multiple gods multiple mantras of course <laughs> you want your obstacles to go away you pray to ganesha or you want prosperity in your career maybe you pray to vishnu or maybe uh, a particular parana devata in your chart maybe you want marriage you pray to a particular devata based on your chart or maybe to uh, Uh, shiva shiva and parvati you can do various sadhanas for specific limited purposes but spirituality is not really those limited purposes spirituality is spiritual growth how you evolve as a spiritual being that has nothing to do with all these limited things so this is about how you find yourself your two nature so for that you don't need many mantras many gods you just stick to one devata one mantra enough you are made if you can achieve with any one mantra you are made that is the goal of spiritual sadhana but distraction the rajas of wanting to do many things wanting to experience everything that comes from mercury so anyway coming back to here the fact that mercury the fifth lord apart from looking at the planet in the fifth house you have to also look at the planets on the fifth uh, the aspects on the fifth house and also fifth lord so fifth lord he shows also fifth house itself contains a rajasic planet venus so there is a lot of rajas passion leading to sadhana so so there is interest in mastering various sadhana and can i say that of course a2 may not mean much here in the d20 but i actually this is not a2 this is a1 yeah yeah if you change let us change the see we wanted to change the time right it can become uh, where is uh, top right oh here here i forgot change it to the next sign so we change the time from 35 to 36 2.92 whatever it came up with some stupid fraction basically it does the next delta so let me just make it 3 oops yeah okay 
So it is Aquarius Lagna now. So Arun Lagna contains Venus. So what was your point? Would he have made the, would be his leaving comes through that? It's not leaving. AL is your image. When A2 was there, it's possibly meant, but I missed it. Yeah, okay, okay. Now the thing is, what does AL, AL having Saturn, Venus and Mandi in his show? It looks like possibly. AL in spirit, uh, D20. What is AL? Arun Lagna. His image, uh, spiritual image is the Arun Lagna is the image in that particular area of life. So, so his image as far as spiritual pursuit is concerned. People look at him as a Venus with Mandi. Mandi shows basically Saturnine result. So, it's kind of like Venus with Saturn. So, what does it mean? Uh, Mandi or Saturn shows somebody who is very disciplined and austere. So, the image of austerity will be projected and Venus will give the image of a big yogi. Venus is a Rajasik Brahmin. And especially in spiritual matters, he is somebody with a lot of power. He will. On the other hand, if it is Jupiter, it is a more sattvic image. But with Venus, this person may be seen as a, a basically somebody with a lot of siddhis, lot of abilities. That is the kind of image he will have. Yeah, that's how the person looks like. Mm -hmm. That's how he looks like. Yeah. you cannot see from this. No, that is from Rashi Arul Lagna. Leo. Leo is the Arul Lagna in Rashi. In Leo, Leo people usually are tall but a little, not fat, but a little stout, not very thin. But all that is from the Rashi chart. Physical attributes are from Rashi chart. D20, this is image only from spiritual activities. What kind of spiritual activities or spiritual stature people imagine when they see the person? I want to know, would this person have had any spiritual So my, my yeah, we will come to that. My, so my guess is more than Capricorn Lagna, it is Aquarius Lagna in D20. So we will go with that and I will just save a note so that there is no confusion. Original time 3, 5 p.m. Oops. Change, change based on D20. Okay. Okay. Will this person have any spiritual experiences? Out of body experiences. Where will I see that? Out of body experiences. Okay. How do you see out of body experiences? So, is spiritual experience like diff much different than out of body experience? For me? Is spiritual experience much different than out of body experience? Well, Definitely. out of body experiences are a kind of spiritual experience. Right? I mean, the thing is, when you are talking about spiritual spirituality, body is just one limited, the, the, the default ident self identification. Body is nothing but a default self-identification because when the soul starts existence as an independent entity, it needs something to cling on to, I. So for that concept of I, this body is there. It is just, don't put too much importance on body when you are talking about spiritual experience. The whole purpose of spiritual experience is to rise above body, to find something higher to identify with and then to find the highest to experience with, uh, to identify with and finally to lose all identification which is Samadhi. So, that is the whole goal of sadhana. So, out of body experience is obviously one, one of the initial experiences of that. So, how do you see out of body experiences? For me? Yeah? 8 in D20, yes. 8th house. So, look at the influence on 8th house and also AA. Who are the Karakas for out of body experiences? Okay. Pick. You guys consult each other and settle down on one planet. You guys can help. <laughs> I would go with Ketu. Ketu. Ketu, right? Rahu and Ketu are the. <laughs> yeah. They, they are the ones who will give you mystical experiences. Experiences beyond the body. And what is the house for such experiences? Eighth house, reaching out for the unknown, eighth house. So, A8 is important, eighth house is important and also in my view, this is just, this is just my view, based on the charts, based on several charts that I have seen with people who had out of body experiences, uh, Kundalini awakening, Kundalini rise, etc. So, I have seen, I have seen several charts and based on it, my conclusion is the Arudha Pada of the eighth house from Ketu counted in reverse is, a, is an important parameter. Ketu basically is the Karaka, so we can see the houses, apart from Lagna, we can see the houses from Karaka also, right? 
Eight posts are from Lagna can show in general all the tapas that you are doing, all the sadhana you are doing. When you are talking about experience, you could basically take Ketu instead. So, Ketu, eighth house, but I am counting backwards because all counting from Rahu and Ketu is backwards. So, for example, here to apply that principle, if you count backwards from the Ketu, the eighth house is Pisces, right? Or you count sixth house forward. So, it is basically Pisces. Yeah, basically take A2. Where is A2? In the 6th house. And does it have any links to the 8th house, etc.? It has the 8th lord in it. There is 8th lord. So, when there is a link between A8 from Ketu, second in the verse, and the 8th lord of Rashi chart, the indications are basically strong. And also, who are aspecting it? See, Karakas are Rahu and Ketu, I said. Is Rahu aspecting it? Does Rahu have a desire to give it? Give AA? Does he have Grahadrishti on it? Grahadrishti shows desire of a planet to give some results. For me? Yeah, he is aspecting it. For me? Yeah. Actually, fourth house Argula is reverse. It's not Argada. He has a Drishti. He has a Grahadrishti. He has a desire to influence it. So, there is a... There is a uh, there is a Rahu, a Rahu influence. So, that is one thing. And what else? The, the very fact that eighth house is very prominent in this, in the Rashi chart. Right. For all occult experiences, eighth house in Rashi chart is very, very important. Do you see them in Mansam differently or Rashi chart? Pardon me? Do you see that kind of analysis of uh, AA? Rashi is basically like the trigger, but actual experiences you see from Mansamsa only. Mansamsa is the, like I said earlier, a prominent eighth house in Vinshamsa can show a mystic or it can show somebody who is always anxious, always tr troubled in life. Yeah. Not set, just searching for unknown. Eighth house is not just searching for unknown, is but it is basically troubles, facing troubles the whole life. You, you, you want to, you worry about where food will come from next day. It is an unknown and you are searching for that unknown. That is also <laughs> eighth house only. Or you want to trace your source. Who am I? Why am I in this world? Why am I being born? What are all we doing? What, is, what are we all up to? That is also eighth house. All this is eighth house. So eighth house on the positive side can be spiritual sadhana and tapasya, tapas, tapascharya. On the negative side it can be just troubles, diseases, worries, being wretched in general. So, but, but the thing is a prominent eighth house in the Rashi chart along with a prominent eighth house and also a strong nishamsa can basically show that. <coughs> okay. And especially Rahu Ketu Antardasa is a very, very important Antardasa. 2001-2002 is very important for his sadhana. Of course, it is already over, but if it is not over, you can tell the person, this is a very key period in your life. You should do a lot of sadhanas uh, geared towards that time. You could have told him, but it's, it's over now. But what is the Antardasa running right now? Yeah. But when it comes to spiritual experiences, which are the most important ones? Rahu Mercury, right? The start is Rahu Mercury because he is the eighth lord. So, Rahu Mercury is the first one that, that I would say is important. Of course, Rahu Saturn, Saturn always two malefics when there is Adasa, Adasa comes, they can give various shocks, jolts basically because some out of body experiences, they can just, just, just jolt you off, they can be jolts. So, Rahu Saturn, Rahu Mercury, Rahu Ketu. And then Rahu Venus, more than experiences, he will give more sadhana. And Rahu Sun, Rahu, again Rahu Moon. So, I will say Rahu Saturn to Rahu Ketu and again Rahu Moon. These are the important ones as far as experiences are concerned. But, Rahu Mars can take the cake. For me? Mars is it Atmakarka? I thought Moon was Atmakarka. I don't think Mars is Atmakarka. Mars is, oh, you are right. Mars is Atmakarka. So, Mars is Atmakarka and he is debilitated, oh my God. He is also in, uh, hmm. he is also in Gandamsa. Mars is in Gandamsa. Oh, yeah. Mars is in Gandamsa. Mars is in very deep Gandamsa. 
So my feeling, yeah, go ahead. Twelfth house, the bhaga falls in the twelfth house. Okay. He doesn't really care. His opinion was he doesn't care how the planets are placed and what effects they are giving. Yeah. But he wants to manipulate them to be in a positive sense to do something good. Yeah. How can I do that? That's the question. Manipulate for what purpose? Maybe towards sadhana, I'm guessing. Yeah. Towards sadhana and uh, I'm thinking there is a body. Yeah. Because this person didn't look to me like a person trying to cheat somebody and make money and go in a materialistic path. Yeah. So I'm guessing in that path. He wants to benefit from the planet placement. How do, I, how do we do that? Right. We'll, we'll do that. One second. Let me just look at the the Mars is Atmakaraka. The twelfth from him contains Venus. Structured by but Rahu is very strong. The thing is Venus Rahu is very strong in this chart. If you see, Venus is in the twelfth house from Atmakaraka. I'm looking at the Moksha planet, Ishta Devata. So from Atmakaraka, the twelfth house in Navamsa contains Venus. But its lord is Rahu. And there is a parivartana between Venus and Rahu. So Venus is basically like Rahu and also the la because Lord is Rahu, I will actually choose Rahu more than Venus. And even in the Vimshamsha chart, even though he is not in the fifth house, Rahu is aspecting the fifth house and he also he is in the, he is in the ninth house of Devatasthana. So my guess is Rahu is the real card for him, real deity. And Rahu can show Durga, one combination for Rahu is Durga. The other one if he wants to the, do Dachi Mahavidya Sasana. The other really key planet, the deity is Chinnamasta. So, if he is already in the Kadi Sadhana, he can consider Chinnamasta. Chinnamasta will be very, very beneficial for him. And in case he hasn't already done, for all you know, he may have already done. But he may have stopped because he wants to try something else. If he just sticks to Chinnamasta, in my view, either Durga or probably Chinnamasta. Yeah, I think my, my, my gut feeling is Chanamasta is the right for him. And this person is somebody who can do that kind of sadhana. Mm. Okay. And the thing is, now he is about to enter Rahu Mars Santa Dasha. What do you guys think of it? What do you guys think of that sadhana? I mean that Santa Dasha. He should definitely uh, propitiate Mars to get, not get a big blow due, because of Krishna. Mm. Okay. Okay, Rahu is in Gandanta, point number one. No, where is, Mars sorry, Mars. Mars is in Gandanta, point number one. And where is, where is the Bhoga? And also he is with Mercury. So, Mars and Mercury will exchange the results in the Vimshamsha. Mm. So, whose results will Mercury give? I mean, whose results will Mars give? Mercury results. So, fifth and eighth house. So, Upasana and also Tapas, Tapascharya. So, Mars gives very strong Tapascharya and also being a malefic planet, being a planet of willpower, basically fighting, a strong fight. Mars loves a fight. So, he gives very intense sadhana. So, in my view, this Mars will either give an intense sadhana or give some big blow physically. So, he doesn't really need to propitiate Mars, in my view. He just needs to do some really rigorous sadhana, which puts his body at risk, which puts his body basically in a vulnerable position. He needs to forget everything, forget about his body, do some really intense and severe sadhana, probably of chinamasta. So my, my feeling is if he does that, that will basically be beneficial in this, in this mass antadasha. In my view, this is actually a very important antadasha, in my view, compared to uh, Rahu Saturn, Rahu Mercury, Rahu Ketu and Ra even Rahu Moon, my view Rahu Mars is the most important because it's, antardas, it's the Antardasha of Atmakaraka and it's basically she is in the sixth house, a Malefic in the sixth house will show, it's a good placement for Mars, right? Mm -hmm. A Malefic in the sixth house shows overcoming the obstacles. He has obstacles, he has all these Siddhis etc. which are blocking him and Mercury being a Rajasic planet can give an attachment to them and to to get rid of those, basically, you need the you need a malefic planet in the sixth to overcome the weaknesses, overcome the obstacles. So, in my feeling, Rahu is a very key planet. And where is the where is the bhoga? 
you should take rahu mass from rahu mass is in the 10th th house so if you take 10th from there where is it 3rd house 3rd house that to aries aries is fire it's a martian sign so the bhoga is in aries in the 3rd house so there is there is strong initiative extremely strong uh, resolve during this antardasha so this is an antardasha when she should do some serious sadhana very heavy sadhana now the thing is for me yeah yeah we can see actually i was going to see narayan dasha vimshamsha but we will see drugdasha also that's a good point you brought up how is this guy's drugdasha this gentleman's drugdasha he is running oh god what under the what the size is he running he, he he is finished with it but he ran from 1998 february till 2006 february he ran kepikan dasha of course drugdasha is the dasha you interpret in the rashi chart and who are in kepikan in the rashi chart all the the five planets the eighth house so would you say this is a defining of course if this person came to you earlier you would have said this 98 to 2006 will a life alter, will be a life altering under the sun from the age 25 till the age uh, whatever 33 or something so this is a life altering under the sun dasha so he is basically done with the biggest dasha of his life the most important dasha now what is the dasha he is running he is running scorpio dasha how is scorpio dasha what do you guys think How is Scorpio dasha? Scorpio contains Atma Karaka, Mars, and all these planets are aspecting it. And moreover, Saturn, if you take Bhrata Karaka, Bhrata Karaka Saturn is in the seventh house. What does it mean? Bhrata Karaka has a Gradhristi. So there is a chance. Normally we see the Rahu Drishti, but Rahu Drishti can also give the result. Basically, it can basically shows at least. I, I don't know whether the Guru will come or not. That I cannot tell because it's only Rahu Drishti. But there is a desire to meet Guru during this life, or there is a Guru who has a desire to influence him. Basically, so there is a chance that he will meet some Guru. When does that happen usually? Usually, what is Rathakarka doing? Rathakarka is the Guru, right? Rathagarga is the spiritual master, and when he aspects the Drugdasha sign, that is when Guru comes. So, for all you know, a Guru may have already come it in the Kepika. Might be coming in the master sign, but it's running now. It's running now. Master is coming in, not running. No, it Master is running now. Oh, running. Okay. Yeah, it started last year. Okay. So, but one thing is, it contains Atmagarga. So there is there will be very serious sadhana. And it is Mars, Mars in one sign. So this is also confirming. In general, during 2006 to 2012, he will do intense sadhana. So this is somebody who can do really intense sadhana. Now, the, quickly, I want to check one thing. I, uh, I said earlier that this can be somebody with good administrative skill, right? there may be a natural administrative skill but if you see the the shamsa what do you see in the the shamsa sun is in the 7th house that's not really great jupiter is in lagna so basically a learned person a guru kind of person and jupiter is in anantamsa what is anantamsa show we said earlier anta is spiritual spiritual enlightenment so that is good so basically his nature as far as karma in the world is concerned is that of a guru basically somebody who teaches people and for me yeah let's not analyze the whole thing but we don't really see him any rajyogas that make him uh, basically start a big organization for example if you take somebody like vivekananda ramakrishna was just an ascetic but if you take vivekananda he established something big we don't really see anything like that here on the other hand we see the 8th lord mercury in the sorry 10th lord mercury and lagna lord in the 8th house along with 8th lord mars very strong mars So this is a chart of basically giving up things and doing sadhana. He is basically a sadhaka rather than somebody who does things and. For me? Not just materialistic. Vivekananda was not materialistic. He was a sannyasi, but he established 
ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಿಷನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೆಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದ ದೇ ದಿಡ್ ದಟ್ ದೇವರ್ ಸನ್ಯಾಸಿ ದೇ ವಾಂಟ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಎಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಐಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲಿಸಮ್ ಐಮ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ರಾಜಯೋಗಾಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಎನೇಬಲ್ ದ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ so i don't i don't see that so forget the point i mentioned earlier about being an administrator probably he is not really meant to be an administrator but he is he will be a sadhaka now quickly let's see narayan dasa of himshamsha narayan dasa of himshamsha that is running right now is that of capricorn earlier it was aquarius now it is capricorn is it a conducive dasa for spiritual growth Pardon me? No, 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 no. Uh, by earlier I meant the previous dasha. Yeah. Is Capricorn 2001 to 2013 a good dasha for spiritual growth? Of course, it is the 12th house. Containing a very strong Saturn. But when will Capricorn give its results? The 12th house of Moksha. When will it give its results? 12th house of liberation. In the last one third. So, 2009 to 2013 is the period of some level of liberation. And when will Saturn give the results? The Lord in the in the middle one third. And the aspectus will give the results in the first one third. So right now it is it is the results of Saturn that are being given. So he will be very disciplined. He can go through any austerities. So all that is what we should expect now. This is a period of austerities. How is the next dasha? Sagittarius. How is Sagittarius? What would you say? This is the 11th house of gains. So, some fruits of sadhana will be achi- achieved then. For me? Yeah, Jupiter is with AI. So, l- l- let's not go through the details, but let us say, the next few years are conducive to a lot of sadhana. Without expecting anything in return, just keep doing sadhana. And especially in the mass period, there is either a danger of physical harm or a very intense sadhana without worrying about physicality, without worrying about body. Basically, body defying, some body defying sadhana. Some sadhana that puts body through intense suffering. That is actually advisable for him during that period. What else can you say? I am just curious. Hmm, okay. Anyway, what else? You guys want to look at anything else? Nothing, nothing. I was just curious. Yeah. We don't, we don't know for sure. I just wanted to see planetary combination. So, what else do you want to? Is there anything that you want to see in the next two three minutes? Yeah. Yeah. But this is a, this is a chart of somebody really really very spiritual. But the thing is, there is some rajas involved, and usual uh, rajas is a good thing. Because it helps you move up. But the thing is, it is also a bad thing because it's an obstruction to sadhana. The goal, of, the goal is basically to lose yourself. And as long as you think, I, I, I am here, I want to do this, I want to do that, even that desire is basically a big obstruction. As I talked to that person, he didn't look like uh, that I left in him, I didn't feel it that way. Okay. I'm, I'm not at all so how, can he, how can he overcome that shyness to become... See, the thing is, the shyness in that regular sense that you see in people, that you don't see. Because, uh, like basically, I, I want to do this. I want to uh, initiate 100 people into doing this particular sadhana. I want to spread this. I want to do that. That kind may not be there. But, I, I want to get moksha. I need to get moksha. I need to be liberated. I want to reach Kali, I want to see Kali, I want to see her, I want to do this. Th- th- that will be there. That is what I am talking about. Because if you look at the Vinshamsa, when I look at the Vinshamsa, when I look at the influences on the 5th house, etc., 5th house and 8th house, there is a strong Rajas, uh, sorry, yeah, strong Rajasic influence. So basically, as far as spirituality is concerned, if you look at the Rashi chart, 8th house is so prominent. So this is, and, all, and also Prabhupada Yoga is there. So this is somebody a renunciate. But the thing is, even for a renunciate who doesn't care about clothes, money, uh, establishing something big, etc., the desire to basically liberate oneself. The, the desire, what I am trying to say is, the desire is too strong that the desire itself is, is basically stopping the desire from satisfying. But the thing is, 
if you say that that sounds good on paper but actually to understand it or to appreciate it is not easy for that person for somebody else it may be so that person just has to do lot of sadhana then only it will come he is meant to do lot of serious sadhana when we said he can mark the side he can have a big blow because gandanta he can do excellent spiritual sadhana yeah so how do we decide or how can we say which path is going to take that way apart from the rest of the chart being chart of anesthetic we can say he can do more sadhana or will he have because it's a chart of anesthetic who said do more sadhana and also if you look at vimshamsa he has a link with the a8 he has a link with uh, a8 from uh, ketu he has a link with the 8th house so uh, based on all those combinations but we, uh, even to do to suggest but the thing is if it is a normal person let's say mask is in kannanta you would definitely say pray to hanuman pray to katkeya so that you don't get harm even to this person you can say there is a chance of a harm physical harm worship katkeya or worship worship uh, hanuman so you could suggest that to this person also probably katkeya yeah mercury with mars just just intuitively basically mars is in scorpio in the rashi chart he is in scorpio and scorpio is basically scorpion right so uh, you are talking about snake scorpions etc so rather than hanuman subramanya basically jals better so as far as physical harm thing is concerned praying to kartikeya may be a little better than hanuman so suggest you can suggest praying to kartikeya but the thing is if he really does a lot of sadhana for all you know there may be some physical harm but it may be good for him for all you know because the planet in gandanta is apgar ka mas and he is for me is reasonably fast moving and is 20 second slow right so there can be some physical blow but it may actually be an opening spiritually speaking so whether you want to make the suggestion or not is up to you but here you can pray to katkeya or just forget about body who cares about the body the goal of our spiritual sadhana is not to care about body you have for example if you take aghoris they just cut their body parts put it in fire you just harm yourself because if you if you think that if you if you th- if you read all kind of nice books spend hours every day doing sadhana if you tell yourself i'm not body i'm not body and you are actually able to experience that you are not the body but suppose at the time you are dying because the thought at the time you are dying decides your future life in a very significant way so at the time you think oh my god i'm hurting i'm hurting what's the point in all the sadhana all your life sadhana will go useless so the, the the goal of all sadhana is to get such control over your mind that any given point of time your mind can be thinking whatever you want to or not thinking anything at all in which case if that happens at the time of death you you basically got moksha so that is the goal so you can you can either do you pray to your god pray to your favorite god and wait for that moment so that that god gives you good thoughts when you are passing away or you could basically practice that death many times over so if you take aghori people with strong mars rahu saturn kind of influences in rashi and vimshamsha they will they will put themselves to harm so uh, so if something happens to him what a big deal is if you are talking about spiritual progress then why do you why do we even have to care about body as long as you care about body and suffering to it it's only limiting your spiritual progress especially for somebody who has strong tamasic influences he has to basically go through if if not aghori he is kind of like an aghori some kind of aghori kind of sadhanas are good for him okay yeah some aghori sir actually you can suggest that actually in rahu mars antardasha if you can find an aghori guru or do some kind of aghori sadhana for chhanamastar kali or whoever it can be actually very beneficial and one uh, just a said start for about uh, one minute usually uh, certain people ask me when i suggest different things Uh, normally people not this chart yeah yeah they ask about say you are saying sometimes uh, you will say hanuman or lakshmi or yeah. how are these different people going to help why not just do one thing or how why different forms yeah see so this is what i was saying earlier if you want to if you want to just reach reach your source take any devata you are all said because all devatas if you trace their source they are basically nirguna brahman so if you say for example atharvashram we are saying in atharvashram you are saying from your uh, uh, actually before that from your uh, no uh, the one before that 
ഇപ്പം ബ്രഹ്മാ എന്നോ ഇപ്പം ഗുണത്രയാതിരുന്നോ ശാസ്ത്രയാതിരുന്നോ അതിൻ്റെ അത്രയാതിരുന്നോ കാലത്രയാതിരുന്നോ ചോദിച്ചു താൻ യുഗ്രജാനിച്ചു ത്വം ബ്രഹ്മാത്വം വിഷ്ണുസ്വം രുദ്രസ്വം ഇന്ദ്രസ്വം അഗ്നിസ്വം വായുസ്വം സൂര്യസ്വം ചന്ദ്രമാസ്വം യു ആർ സെയിങ് സോ ടു ഗണപതി യു ആർ സെയിങ് യു ആർ സൂര്യ യു ആർ ചന്ദ്ര യു ആർ ബ്രഹ്മ യു ആർ വിഷ്ണു യു ആർ അഗ്നി ഇഫ് യു റീഡ് സൂര്യോപനിഷത് ദട് ആൾസോ സേസ് യു ആർ ബ്രഹ്മ യു ആർ വിഷ്ണു യു ആർ രുദ്ര ഇഫ് യു റീഡ് നാരായണ സൂക്തം ഇറ്റ് സേസ് സ ബ്രഹ്മ സസിവ സഹരി സേന്ദ്ര സോക്ഷ പ്രമാണ സ്വരാട്ട് സോ ആൾ ഇഫ് യു റീഡ് മോസ്റ്റ് ഹൈ പ്രേയേഴ്സ് വേദിക് പ്രേയേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ദേവതാസ് ഇഫ് യു റീഡ് പുരാണാസ് യു ലോവർ ലെവൽ പ്രേയേഴ്സ് മേ ബി തിങ്സ് ആർ ഡിഫറെന്റ് But if you read the highest prayers, Vedic prayers of various devatas, all of them say, Shiva, Vishnu, uh, Surya, Ganapati, Durga, you take anybody, the prayer says, you are Brahma, you are Vishnu, you are Shiva, you are everybody. So some people may think it's all lies. It's like, when I go to Sesho, I say, oh, you are the greatest. And I go to him, I say, oh, Ramakrishna, oh, you are the greatest. I'm praising everybody. Some people may think that it is in, in that spirit. That's, it's not. It is basically, it is written by Rishis, who experienced that devata at the nearly nirguna form where it will seem as though all gods emanate from that form that can happen with any devata you can reach the source with any particular devata and it will seem as though all gods are actually coming from him you will you can actually experience that so if your goal is to actually reach nirguna brahman or reach your source take any devata surya ganesha shiva vishnu doesn't matter but whatever form you take uh, whatever formless one you take the thing is the formless one actually doesn't have a name you give a name based on the path that you take directly reaching the formless is difficult so you start with vishnu or you start with shiva and then go way up you say oh shiva give me this give me knowledge and then say shiva actually shiva you are everybody so you basically trace your way up with that particular god so that you reach your own source in that case whether you start with shiva or vishnu or durga you reach the same thing but if you are talking about forms they have specific roles in the world the nirguna brahman manifested as different entities and each entity has a particular role vishnu has a particular role shiva has a particular role durga has a particular role and if you ask a particular devata to give something else it may not happen you understand what i am saying so when you are asking for material things when you are uh, rather than material things when you are asking for limited things it is better to choose the right devata for that either based on the nature or based on your based on the chart so different dev- devatas have different limited purposes but when you are asking for the unlimited which is self realization atma gnana it doesn't matter which devata you pick but still even there we pick a particular devata who is more conducive based on the chart because you did a particular devata sadhana in the past life if you did a similar sadhana it is it is basically it is it, it will be productive more easily but theoretically you can pick any devata and do sadhana sooner or later you will get moksha by sooner or later i don't mean today or tomorrow i mean in the next million lives or 2 million lives so i interrupted you you were going to say something yeah, same thing i was i usually tell them like um, for a limited purposes my concept was like if somebody wants to get married wants to get a child wants to get a promotion in the job wants to get a job he is out of job wants to get a job or has some problems with boss at the work and he wants to overcome them For all these things, all these things? blocks in the people because of the nadis and the yeah. different uh, mantras help in resonating the, that those specific that nadis is. with the specific energies energies which will help him come out of that problem to come out of the problem but that eventually if you want to that is a spiritual process reach the highest then it doesn't really matter but for limited purposes this is how i yeah. explain saying this is how possible yeah. they work yeah exactly okay with that we will end for today om shanti shanti shanti